YouTube War Dog message over. Welcome back, guys, girls, and everybody else to part three of our Crusader Kings dynasty in Saxon, England, where we are, of course, playing as me with the Bromhead dynasty. It is 879 AD. We've been playing for 12 years. The initial invasion of the Viking sons of Lothbrook uh, Ivar the Boneless and Halfdan Whiteshirt is over. Halfdan was successful in taking most of the north of England. Ivar was not successful in taking East Anglia. And now we are attempting to survive with our sons Burgrid and Ekbert. Uh, we're just going to crack straight on and start rolling through at speed 4. Because I don't think there's too much that I can do. We're still trying to sway my liege, King Burgrid of Mercia. I'm probably going to uh, fluctuate as well, guys, between calling them Petty King and King. Um, obviously, a Petty King is a Ducal tier title. In, in most other cultures, it would be called a Duke. But um, for a Petty King, I don't think they ever referred to them as Petty King they referred to them as king. It's just that we look back historically on them and say, well, they weren't really kingdoms in the way that things became kingdoms later on. They were, you know, smaller. So they're petty kings. But I'll probably keep fluctuating between referring to him as Petty King Burgrid and King Burgrid. In my attempts to align King Burgrid to my interests, I have found an opportunity. I think I could argue that our goals are, in fact, the same as I dictate my next letter. I think I would try to emphasise those shared interests. Burgrid sees through my efforts. Good. That went well. Halfdan has formed the Anglo-Nordic hybrid culture from, from Anglo-Saxon and Norse. They speak Norse. They... Interesting. That's essentially mostly just Norse, but intermingling with Anglo-Saxon. Culturally speaking, yeah, the south of England is Anglo-Saxon. I'm still kind of feeling like we're on a knife sedge about all of this. Um, let me just check whether we can improve stuff. No, we need 100 gold to do that. I am passing through Warwick, the capital of my liege, King Burgred, when I receive an invitation to visit his castle. As I arrive, he welcomes me with open arms and a tour. One thing that strikes me is that the place is full of unfinished projects. Hmm. Just show me to my rooms. <laughs> Greetings, Earl Thomas of Lindsay. I would be delighted if your son and heir, Burgred, could visit my court in Chester to meet his peers. I'm inviting everyone of note, which unfortunately includes him. Earl Marcus Bjornwolfsson. Um, of course he will be there. I have no real reason to distrust Earl Marcus over here. Some of my counsellors believe the job is theirs by right of blood or influence alone. How wrong they are. I expect results, yet I am often disappointed. After a long day, I am complaining to Wolfrith when she interrupts me. Let me do something about it, husband. A few lessons might sharpen their wits. Okay, uh, so we've got Chancellor Sigurik, who is seven, Chancellor Herbert, who is seven. Or Edwig, who's a 12. It's not going to be Edwig. He's 59 years old. Sigurik could use a tutor.
A courier comes bearing bleak tidings in a small black crate. My son Burgred drowned while playing with Ian here. I can barely peer through my watering eyes into the box, but one glimpse confirms that this is indeed the corpse of mine own darling. What the hell? I've never had this event before. I figured... I always figured when I get those pop-ups that are like, hey, can your son come and hang out? That, like, there must be a negative outcome. But every time I've done it, it's like they just come back and they're fine. Oh, my God. Innocence is a fatal poison. I tell you what, I'm pinning him killed my son I had so many hopes for you my sweetest child all the things you would learn experience and do there were so many possibilities a whole life to live maybe you would have had children of your own one day but now none of those things will ever come to be oh my god rest in peace little Burgrid Okay, so now I have one son. Uh, we should... Uh, we'll observe a period of mourning first. Life has never been easy, but it feels like the loss of my son Burgred has pushed me over the edge. I still remember him as a baby, so tiny, so fragile. Despite that, he survived, growing up, growing older, until now, when he suddenly stopped. I had so many hopes for his future, so many things I wished to see which now can never come to pass. It is hard, but Wolfrith can help me get through this. Aethelswith was the one that he was in betrothed to. She's a year younger than uh, my son, right? It's the 1st of January. It's been over a month. So I think we're going to reform our alliance with our liege by betrothing our only remaining son to his brother's former betrothed. My God, what a tragic turn of events. Okay, we should be about to get a new learning perk. My bigger concern is what's going to happen when Halfdan decides he wants to start attacking people. He's got a lot of allies. Hmm. It says that his allies' military strength is not very big, but I'm not so sure it's that's the case. My counsellor Aidwig died of cancer, aged 49. That was my spy master. We have incredibly limited options to replace my spy master. In fact, we don't have anyone because the other three are all my other counsellors. Oh my god. Poor Burgred. Uh. Obviously, I don't have anyone else at court that could be a chancellor. I have two female guests. Okay, I guess I don't have a spy master for a little while. Definitely not good. There's our learning perk. Uh, we are doing anatomical studies. <laughs> I think restraint, even though it means sexual restraint, but restraint from not murdering the child that killed our son. We'll go with that. I can 
declare war on Jarl Halfdan. A notable guest has arrived. I mean, he'd be a terrible chancellor, but Oswin Maddock. He's an Anglo-Saxon Catholic. He is cynical, patient, sadistic, Midas touched, aspiring blade master, strong and scarred. He is 50, but given that we... Can I not recruit him? Oh, I need 195 gold to recruit him. Good lord. What the hell does this man think he is? With Countess Wolflith's diligent administration of my household's finances, there is more gold at the end of this season than expected. How should we put it to best use, husband? Hmm. Invest the money in the local area. I'm pretty sure Egbert has got a tutor. Yes, he does. Egbert is more likely to receive a good education due to Countess Wolfrid's tutelage. Lovely. Increased military presence in Nottinghamshire. Good job, uh, Reeve the Sixbold. Six Sax? I don't know. I'll probably fluctuate between the two. Um, I'm going to let this uh, round of trying to sway my liege complete, but then I think I might switch over to trying to romance Wolfrith, although she's 38. our inheritance it is actually confederate partition that's interesting but then again i am the english culture which is considered tribal at this stage what's the saxon culture considered to be the anglo-saxon i guess oh they're tribal as well it up to speed five while we're uh, not doing too much. My counsellor Eilfgar died from being ill, aged 61. So now I don't have a steward either. I mean... Well, let's talk to our confidant. After a long conversation with my wife, Countess Wolfrith, I can feel my thoughts calming down. However, as I rejoin the court, I can see the jealousy on the courtier's faces. After all, who wouldn't want to have Wolfrith's trust? Excuse you? Are you coveting my wife? A notable guest has arrived, an experienced fighter. I mean, can we recruit him? Yes, he costs 65 gold, which is still not fantastic, but it's better than nothing. Let's grab him. Um, would he be a good steward? Not particularly. He'd be a great marshal, though. And Sakesbald would make a better steward, so... Leave Sakesbald can now be our steward, and our new courtier Guthmund will be our marshal. We have low control in the county, so I'm going to have him deal with that. Wife inspires recruitment in Nottinghamshire. Lovely. Greetings, my amicable liege. 
I write to inform you of a most appalling discovery I made about Reeves Sykesbald. This man is engaging in unsavoury and dishonourable activities behind your back. I sincerely hope that bringing this sensitive information to your attention will prove my unwavering loyalty towards you, my Earl. Signed, Reeve Sigurick of Retford. Why would this stress us out? Because we're honest? Interesting. Hmm. I'm not really sure that that's the kind of honesty that, like, I would still want to know, so I'm going to say I will not forget your gesture, Sigurik. He, Re Reeve Sakesbald is a deviant. King Berger is not swayed. We will not make another attempt. We're going to abandon that. And we are going to attempt to romance our wife. Oh, that's going to go well then. Oh, I see. I mean, I, we're still going to try. I don't know the chances in the, uh, in the roleplay setting. The time has come to let my feelings toward Countess Wolfrith be known. I want her to remember this day for the rest of her life. Uh, I'm going to write a love poem. The candle is burning low when I finally finish my poem. Before I send it, I give it one last read. Your ladylike manners are like a burning stick. I would be blessed if I could hear your voice again. That I may know if you're warm or more like a corpse. You put Aphrodite to shame. It's not a good poem. The waiting is unbearable. The thought of rejection makes me sick to my stomach. When her reply arrives, I tear the seal with shaking hands. While I cannot encourage you, Earl Thomas, I am most grateful for your kind words. Yours faithfully, Wolfrith. Wolfrith won't resist my charms for long. I hope. Keep it up at uh, speed five here. Keep trying to make some progress on stuff. The rain is pouring down outside. My serene Countess Wolfrith sighs as she looks out the blurred window. How wretched Lincoln can be. <laughs> I know. I wish I had someone to keep me company during the long and dreary days. Is my spring blossom a cat person or a dog person, I wonder? A loyal dog would make an excellent companion. She adores the dog! Yes! Guthman finished the increased county control task. Lovely. Uh, I think I'll keep him on organising the army. We do also have another learning perk. Uh, I'm going to go with wash your hands just because I think it'd be... It's a bit of a push to say we'd be carefree so relatively soon after losing our son. There are few things I enjoy more than Countess Wolfrith's company. She dragged me around to one activity after another and the high pace truly helped me keep my mind off my troubles. After this short break I was once again ready to take on my duties. I'm lucky to have a friend like Countess Wolfrith. Spending time with Wolfrith is always good for me. Good, good. So we are friends then, yeah? Yes, we are. I am attending a dance in Lincoln to spend some time with Countess Wolfrith. The mere thought of touching hands makes my heart jump. But when I arrive, I find her stuck in a conversation with Earl Maccus of Cheshire. The reclusive man drones on and on, totally oblivious to Wolfrith's discomfort. Hmm. He 
this is the host that uh, our son was killed with, but not the guy that actually drowned him. But uh, mm, what would we do here? I think we will say. This is difficult. This is actually a hard one. You know what? I'll be a bit of a dick to him. Whoop. I swore a bit there. But since he's the host that uh, irresponsibly ended up in our son's death, I'm just going to say enough. You're boring the lady to death. I don't think we'd have much love loss for Earl Maccus. Even though it wasn't him that ultimately did the deed. The Earldom of Lindsay gained military presence for five years. Nice. Our Marshal's doing pretty well. Guthmund. I'm still concerned about Halfdan. He's in a war with attacking King Kausantin. Machinade of Alba in the Suthria conquest of the Mormidon of Inverness. So Ivar is trying to take Inverness and the uh, Norse are winning. How many men does uh, the King of Scotland have? Not very many. Man, we've got problems with these Norse. I wonder if an alliance with uh, East or West Francia might be the answer. Lady Wolfrith, let me prove my devotion to you in any way you deem fit. Wolfrith ponders the request for a while before her face lights up. You should be able to sustain yourself on nothing but your love for me for many days. My devotion will carry me through. You managed to avoid sustenance. That would be a difficult one for me. Uh, Canites in Mercia? King Burgred of Mercia has announced to the world that he and his vassals have converted to Canitism. Having become disillusioned with the teachings of the Catholic priests, the nobles of Mercia no longer consider the clergy to be righteous and true. As Canites, they believe their new faith properly aligns with the will of God, and they are distancing themselves from their former religious institutions. Interesting. My king has become Canite. Cain was the first victim of the evil of the demiurge, creator of all physical matter. Since matter and bodies are evil, bodies must be defiled and destroyed through sinfulness so that this... What is going on here? Wow, they believe... Oh, they're into hedonism. Sins are gluttony, impatience, arrogance and deceit. Oh good, that's me. Virtues, temperance, patience, humble... Yeah, humility rather, honesty, which is also me, and being a wise man. Interesting. Deviance is accepted, adultery is accepted, witchcraft's accepted. This is. Wow, okay. I mean, I'm not a religious person anyway, so I think I would say, you know, they do have some good points. With my decision to convert to Canaanitism, I arranged for a priest to come to my court and conduct the rites. While I don't really believe the drivel that these pr priests spout, 
There were enough political advantages to converting that I knew I needed to do this sooner or later. Regardless of my reasons, I can breathe a sigh of relief in knowing that my liege King Burgrid will no longer be able to hold my faith against me. Who the hell's Adela? Just a wandering random zealot. Okay. Well, uh... At least I have her to guide me. I guess she's my guide in all things Canaanism. Oh. Ruler embraces the true faith. Prince Rodri II of uh, Gwynedd has converted, as has King Edmund of East Anglia. This is interesting. There's some kind of heresy sweeping through the British Isles right now. As I struggle to make out the tiny letters on the scroll before me, I feel a headache building once again. Why do scribes insist on writing in such small symbols? I squint and try again. Nothing short of a miracle. With the aid of a stone of glass, even old men struggling with bad eyesight could read with ease. Who's Joffrey? My new priest. My new Didascalos. Joffrey, I require your assistance. Can she be assigned as my spy master? Would she be good at it? I mean, she can, but she wouldn't. My champion here, but yeah, you know what? She's teaching me about Canaanism, so maybe we don't. Maybe that means that we make her our court tutor. She would actually be good at it. She will be our court tutor. And um, Herbert, where was he? We have some extra dude kicking around. He's 64 years old, so we don't need to be too worried about him. But uh, we'll assign him as our seneschal, just to give him something to do. And somebody should be running the household, I guess. Servants. Egbert adopted the Anglo-Saxon culture. Lovely. Our son is Saxon. He will not have the same struggles of being English in a medieval time before English was really a thing. What's this? We are being raided by Jarl Vang. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. He has 2,000 men. We can unlock a new learning perk. Um, I'm not really sure I would scientifically have an iron constitution, although maybe I would. I'm not 100% sure on how that would work, given that my constitution would be, what, uh, more than a thousand years removed. 1200 years removed from now but I am also ahead of them so maybe I have uh, resistance to the problems they have I don't know oh good um, my wife Wolfrith and my courtier Adela were captured by Jarl Wagen of Schmolland during the siege of Lincoln Excuse me, sir. That is my wife. For 25 gold, I can buy her back. Well, let's make sure we do that. Right, good. She's back. We will return to... Oh, wait. We can't romance schema. until the 28th of June. Well, that's only next month, so that's fine. Uh, let's try and get my... my guide back.
Good. We will reappoint her as court tutor. And you know what I might do, actually, before we end the episode? Can I not have him learn language from me? Oh, I guess, does he already... Oh, of course, we speak Anglic, don't we? Right. We are currently being raided by Jarl Vang. We've had to pay ransom for our wife and our court tutor. But we're still clinging on. Unfortunately, I am 50 and my wife is 42. I don't think we're going to be having any more children. So Eckbert is probably going to be Eckbert Thomason because he's Saxon. So that's how their names work. He's Thomas's son. So Eckbert Thomason now. Um, he's probably going to be the only child that, uh, that I'll have that survives to adulthood, which is kind of tragic. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, if you are, please do comment, like, and subscribe on the video. Feel free to check me out on Twitch. The link will be in the description as well. Uh, I will see you on episode four. You should be watching this while I'm away on Twitch. If anybody's unaware, I'm away for two and a half weeks. Although I reckon that this will be uh, on the 9th. I'm back on Twitch on the 19th of May. So if you are watching this in that window, I won't be on Twitch until the 19th, but you will still get this video and the one next week as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon, but for the time being, it's going to be Wardog out.